Hello, this is Mainer4657. Welcome back to Let's Play Tales of Vesperia. Okay, you're probably wondering what you're looking at right now. Well, um, today I was actually grinding and looking and getting some items and stuff. But, and then I went back to the capital city in the lower quarter and I went in Yuri's room and this cutscene appeared, so now I have to show you guys it since, um, it's new. Okay, so, I don't know if this, um, cutscene actually has any voice acting. So, do you mind if we take the room next door? It might be a bit small, but go right ahead. Oh, wait for me. Okay. I know, I actually just came back here to rest, but then this cutscene showed up, so... Welcome back, Yuri. You're full of energy as usual, Ted. Uh, eh? Flynn's not with you? He's been busy with the knights. I couldn't dra drag around a rising star captain on my little errands. Did you two get in a fight again? Again? So Flynn and Yuri fight a lot? Yep, day in and day out. Yuri, I want you to go and make up with Flynn. Look, it's not that simple. Simple? You and Flynn are as simple as, can <laughs> as they come. Oh, like when they couldn't pay our tax like when we couldn't pay our taxes, you thought you could just get rid of the tax collector. What simple is uh, uh, what simple is your way of thinking? Even I would have thought that one <laughs> through a little more. That's simple, all right. Sorry about my reading skills today. They're both uh, too stubborn. If they uh, just give each other an inch, like when Yuri quit the Imperial Knights, things kept getting rocky like that. You two are incor incor incorrigible. Here, take this and go patch things up with Flynn. Is this another side quest or something? Tamed bread. Oh. Bread? Why? You can't... You can split it. You're <laughs> you can split it. Yuri and Flynn have split everything with each other ever since they were kids. How does he know that? Like their first sword. They could only afford one, so they switched off and <laughs> on all day long. Ah, I think I'm starting to see how similar Yuri and Flynn really are. We've been together forever. Uh, when you grow up in the same environment, you're bound to be a little alike. You better make up with Flynn before the next time you come back here. Then I'll have the Mrs. Cook up everything nice. Big dinner. Make up with Flynn, huh? It was so easy when we were kids. <laughs> That's an interesting cutscene. You're probably wondering about Yuri's hat. Well, um, something I haven't shown in the Let's Play yet is, um, costume items, which is kind of similar to the canteen. Like here, you'll see attachment. And I also got a white hat, but I like the black hat better. It matches. And for, uh, and for Rita, I got this green gem that she wears around her neck. You can just barely see it. And for Judith, I got hair pins that really stand out. I thought that, I thought that looked kind of funny. It also changes her hairstyle, if you, if you look. Actually, no, it doesn't. I thought it did at first. Nope. She always wears her hair like that. I always think, like, she has one strand of hair going down the middle of the other two, or something like that. I haven't got anything for um, es um, Estelle, Raven, or... Actually, I did get something for Carol, but for the life of me, I cannot see what it changes. But whatever. So I was just grinding for items, uh, and then I just found that cutscene. So, as you all know that. You want to rest? No, I just did that. Okay, so now that I'm recording, I might as well go do something else that has something to do with the story. <laughs> yep, so we're here in the lower quarter, where you start the whole entire, where you start the entire game. And I ran into some funny dialogue earlier, and I wish I could have shown that. But basically, like I was going around walking to town, talking to everybody, and everyone was complimenting Yuri how he has a bunch of girls following him now, which is kind of strange. Anyway, I've been playing as Yuri a lot, and I've also leveled up a few people. We're all like level 40 now, which isn't much higher from where I left off, but uh, actually I think it's only one level difference. Okay, so what was the last thing I did in the story anyway? If you're ever confused about what to do, you go down to the synopsis thing. Last you destroyed dragon was found on top of Mount Tamza. Oh yeah, that's right. Fairy is making use of the dragon's flight to breach the desert's mountains and meet with Pharaoh, the bird lord of Kagor. Ah, uh, I don't want to do that. <laughs> That's a big cutscene. I don't want to make this whole video a big cutscene. That's not fun. Oh well. Well, we gotta do something, right? You know what? I always wondered what's in this big lake thing. But you can't really go in it with your boat, which kind of sucks. Um, I guess there really isn't anything else I can do, except more grinding, but that probably won't be that fun to watch. 
what I was grinding, um, I, w I was grinding down in the South Islands, where I haven't really explored much, and I found and I identified some new monsters. But basically, an item that I was looking for is this stuff: jet black ink. It's a really rare uh, monster drop item, and it's used to make some um, character items, like character custom items and stuff. So. This little island right here is where I was grinding, where you find these little octopus guys, and that's where you get the ink. There's something right there. Oh wait, no, never remember what that is. I wandered around here a lot in the other parts, so I need to get my shit together and find out what to do. I guess I could show you... Wait, no. It's not gonna be there, is it? Look, we have some new monsters here. Oh wait, no, that guy isn't new. This guy's new. Well, new to me Dude, isn't Eddie, gonna be the same as new to you. Jeez, these guys are huge. I need to go stock up on more magic lens. This is a rat, a razzle bit, level 40. Same level that we are. This is probably a good grinding spot for right now. Like for a level right now. Uh, sorry, I still can't talk. I haven't really, uh, I haven't really been awake very long. This is still actually kind of like uh, extremely early afternoon, and I'm usually awake at night working. So. I don't usually get up until close to noon. Maybe, um, usually I've been trying to wake up a little bit earlier, but sometimes it's kind of impossible. Usually I wake up around 10 or 11. I'm still using this, uh, alt um, altered art with Yuri until I learn it, but I have no idea how many times I've used it since it has no use count. Because if you go to the arts here, you can't actually look of how much you used it. And the usage of the original art won't go up because technically you're not using that either. So that kind of sucks. I wish there was a way to keep track of how many times you used it, but there isn't. As far as I know. I guess we can go to the Sands of Kagor and go see Pharaoh. Might as well. There's nothing else we can do, really. And I'd want to progress the story. Because something I really want to show you is, um, it's, it's kind of like, it's really, really popular Japanese humor these days, but there's a, there's a hot spring around here. It's like, not really a hot spring, it's more like a bathhouse, and it's supposed to be right here. You can actually kind of see the hot spring from the sky, but I can't go in it. Like, you can see it right there. But I just can't go in it right now. I have no idea why, but I just can't. I'm guessing it has something to do with a major plot point. What's with all this fog? That's really annoying. How do you get rid of that? I guess that's how you get rid of that. So I want to show you that place. That I've, I've already kind of said that before, but I just wanted to say it again because I don't know why. Oh my god, I forgot to put, I forgot to turn those things off. Damn it! Sorry I guys had to see that. I meant to turn those notifications off. So this is where Pharaoh lives. He's in this crag craggly rock thing. And you can only get here from the air, so this, that's why we need a bowel. Oh sure, no voice acting. Thank you. So this is where Pharaoh is? Should be. I, w I wasn't able to see him when we came to the desert, but I think this is where we can meet him. I hope nothing bad will happen. What if he suddenly attacks us? I can't make any guarantees. I don't think we'll have a say in the matter. <sighs> Carol, are you okay? No, I'm not okay. I should go. Pharaoh sure did pick a bleak place to live in, don't you think? They say this area used to be covered in lush greenery. Why did it turn into a rocky desert? Hmm, I don't know that much. Estelle, are you going to meet him? Even even though you could be killed? Yes, I've already made my, my peace with this decision. Is he even here? I didn't even see him. Rita, you've been acting a little funny ever since hearing Judy's story on the ship. Do you have a problem with meeting Pharaoh? I... I don't know why... wouldn't you? 
I just think it'd be hard on her to hear what he has to say. But it's too late to turn back now. We've come this far, after all. Yes, we have. I still don't see him. Maybe he's, like, flying up in the air or something right now. Maybe if we wait right here, real patient-like, he'll come. Look at this place. Hmm. Huh. Kind of like this rock formation. Well, he doesn't seem to be here. Maybe he's off somewhere taking a nap. <laughs> That's funny. Pharaoh, you are here, aren't you? I'll take that as a yes. Ah! Oh, it's on his face. Now I can see it. Insipid poison. You appear before me at last. Can I have that voice effect? So you are here. Is that how you greet all your guests, Pharaoh? By calling them names? For what reason have you come to me? Surely you are aware that I could end your existence with a mere thought. <laughs> you talk pretty big, don't you? Well, if you really want to fight, I'd hate to disappoint you. Yuri, no! Everyone, please wait! Estelle! Pharaoh, please hear what I have to say. Does death hold no fear for you, little one? For you gaze now into the mouth of death itself. I am afraid, but I'm even more afraid of dying without knowing who I really am. Bellius told me I needed to meet you to learn about my destiny. I have to know just what that destiny is. I understand that I am a threat to the Entelikea, but you said that I am a poison to this world. What is this power I have? Just who is the child of the full moon? If it is true that my existence cannot be tolerated, then it's okay if I have to die. But I at least deserve to know why it is I have to die. Please tell me, I beg of you. There was a time when this was a verdant land, sheltered by the blessing of an air crene. So there was an air crene here. But what happened? Why did it change? What you see are the results of too much air and its aftermath. As to why the air ran rampant, the answer lies with the poison brought by the Child of the Full Moon. Huh? The power of the Child of the Full Moon stimulates the air crane more than any Blastia. Huh? Blastia convert air into energy by way of a formula. So if Estelle can use her healing arts without the aid of any Blastia, she must possess a formula in her very being that lets her convert air into energy. Judith was searching for Blastia that used a particular kind of formula. So, this special formula Estelle has must also consume massive amounts of air, which causes the air crene to become more active and pump out more air than they should. I had hoped my hypothesis would have been wrong. Then... I... It is as she has said. With each use of her power, the Child of the Full Moon uses far more air than the Blastia. In so doing, the imbalance of air in this world is furthered. For the planet, such an existence can only be called a poison. So you just wipe it out then? Little quick to judge, aren't you, Pharaoh? This problem concerns the entire planet, and she is its cause. To do nothing would be unparalleled folly. If the problem's with Estelle, then it's for us to solve. You have no place in our affairs. The gravity of this situation is beyond your grasp. You don't honestly think that everything's gonna be all sunshine and rainbows if Estelle dies, do you? It would at least eliminate one problem. Pharaoh, at Heliord I stopped myself, and again at Dawngrest I stopped you. What I thought was a Blastia turned out to be a human. Before I realized it, I had lost my way. I never thought this child could be as great a danger as you had said. And due to your confusion, I granted you the time necessary to see things as they are. As a result, my sister Belius is now lost to me. Enough. This power will bring only ruin. Hmm, not sure I understand all this, but if her power's the problem, why can't she just not use it? 
There can be no guarantee she will not try to use the power. That's true. She does have trouble turning a blind eye to things happening around her. Someday she will surely use her power to help someone. However, as long as she keeps that spirit of compassion, she cannot only be seen as harmful. She is not like Ablastia. I know that you can feel the difference. Compassion alone will not save this world. Listen, Pharaoh. I get that you've thought all this through with everybody's best interest in mind, but why doesn't that world have a place for Estelle? It is sometimes necessary to remove a part to save the whole. I don't buy that for a second. What makes you so high and mighty that you're the one to decide who gets cut and who doesn't? We have endured the anxiety of existence for far greater a span than you can conceive. Such words mean nothing from those who call this world home for but a fleeting moment. Pharaoh, please listen. The important thing is finding a way to stop the excessive air, correct? We still have time left to search for such a thing. Judith! And if... If the effects of Estelle's power reach their absolute limit, I will kill her as promised. You should have no complaint with this. Hey, Judith, are you serious? I'm sure brave Vesperia will come up with something before that happens, right? What? I... um... Yeah, yeah, of course we will! Well, score one for Judith. So that settles it. If we humans are to blame for Estelle's problem in bringing on the apocalypse, then it's up to us to make things right. If we give it all we've got and still blow it, then you can slow roast us on a grill for all I care. You have changed. If you were still as before. Have I? That is nice to hear. Very well. Be ever mindful, though, that time is fleeting. Wait! If the formulas are causing the excessive air, then there must have been times when this happened in the past. I mean, the Blastia were a product of an ancient civilization. There exist those who have inherited the sins of the past. If any can speak of what occurred in the days of old, it is them. He's gone! Um, I... Thanks for everything, Yuri. Judith. You too. No problem. But hey... What? It's okay if I have to die? What the hell was that? I'm sorry. I don't want to hear that again. I'm sorry. I was really worried there for a while. We were pretty lucky that bruiser was in a mood for conversation. Poor Raven's heart can't handle that sort of stuff anymore. If he really wanted to kill Estelle, he'd have attacked us immediately. And that's what I can't figure out. I imagine Pharaoh was conflicted as well. He hid himself from us in the desert to see just what we were made of. Huh. Maybe he wasn't as bad as we thought after all. You might be right. I get the feeling he'd do whatever's necessary when push comes to shove. That sounds like you. Maybe. But what are we gonna do, Yuri? You heard what he said. We're going to fix the problems the air's causing, and that's all. That's easier said than done. We're pretty much at square one, you know. There's no doubt that the formulas are related somehow to the air getting used up. We need to find out about the ancient Blastia, and if they went berserk or not. If we had that kind of information, it might give us a clue. Ask those who have inherited the sins of the past about the days of old. Or at least that's what Pharaoh said. The Critia were the ones to invent the Blastia. In other words, we need to ask a Critian who is still familiar with the old stories. Yeah, the Critia are often credited as the inventors of the Blastia. There isn't much left of the Critian city of Timza, though. Things might be different if we had somewhere else to look. The hidden city of Miorzo. It is far older than Temza, and the birthplace of the Kritya. The first Blastia also originated there. 
Really? Well, what do you know? You wouldn't happen to know where this Mjorzo might be, would you, darling? Hmm. I've heard that name somewhere. There was a Critian in Ospio. I'm sure they mentioned something about it. Do you think that person might still be there? Well, there's no harm in checking it out. Judith, are you coming with us? I should. We still have the issue of the guild to straighten out. So, to Ospio then. Wow, that was an insanely long cutscene. Oh, we gotta skip too. All that stuff about the balance of the world is pretty hard to take in. Yeah. I hadn't even been outside the capital until just a while ago myself. And now we're here talking about the fate of the world. You never know what life will bring you. But isn't that what makes it interesting? I don't think we can afford to be that relaxed anymore. Estelle doesn't have much time left. What's the harm? It's not as if acting all serious is gonna solve anything. Besides, Estelle will notice if we look all worried. Well, maybe so, but... We won't forget what Pharaoh said. Relax. I know, it's just... Estelle's got it the worst. If we get too down about this, we won't be much help to her. Huh, what was that? I did not know you could do that. Cool. Does that work on the, on the regular map too? Holy crap. That makes it much easier to see where I'm going. I cannot believe I never noticed that. I never played around with the D-pad before. Ah, the things you learn. Okay, so anyway, after all that, geez, we're up to like 21 minutes now. Well, there's a video right there. Okay, so I'm going to go and, um, well, I guess there's nothing to do but go back to some town and save. And I don't really know which town to go to. And I'm not going to Ospio yet. I want to see if we can do other things first. There were some more items I wanted to pick up because they help create more er character items. I'm also not so sure, but I want to go check and see if that island is reachable yet. Nope, not yet. Also, for some reason, if you look on the map here, there's an 8. You can even see it in the water. Why is there an 8? What does that mean? I don't know. Uh, can we get in this place? I don't think it would have changed from meeting Pharaoh, but nope. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the port and save there. And then on the next episode of Let's Play Tales of Vesperia, we are going to... Um, well, I guess there's nothing else to do but progress the plot some more. There's really not much more grinding I can do. I mean, if I level up any more, then I'll be so overpowered for the next boss. It's going to be ridiculous. Although that would be kind of fun. This looks like a pretty good place to save. We're going to be able to do a lot of extra stuff kind of soon, but just not quite yet yet. I mean, not just just not quite yet. That's what I meant to say. Ooh, these guys are all drunk. Okay, I'll see you all next time, folks.